Hey guys, welcome to Fantasy Football Academy 2020 on a mock draft Monday here with our very own Professor Chad. Professor, what's going on, my man? Hey, nothing much, man. Just chilling. What about you? Oh, same, same. Look, I love, I'm loving the background, loving the uh, – what is that, the headboard there? Yeah, that's the bedboard right there. Exactly. Hey, that's, hey that, that's the thing to do. Look, when, if you, when you can't get out, when you got the, the pandemic and on – what better thing to do than to chill in your bed and mock draft with the Dean? Come on, guys. Yeah. All right, look. Exactly. The news that's making news right now is no college football this year. And, you know, the thing that hits me about this from an NFL perspective is that it's going to affect us more next year with the draft. This year, all they're talking about is doing more games on either Friday or Saturday, which we usually don't get until later in the year when college football is over and done with and we're waiting on all the bowl games to happen. So the deeper scouting, the need for seniors to make that push isn't going to be there. We've even got some seniors that are skipping their senior year, they've already opted out of their senior year getting to get ready for the NFL draft. So, you know, what do you see coming out of this from an NFL perspective? Well, if you're ready to go after your junior year, I have no problem you skipping your senior year. I mean, it happens anyways. You know, you see a lot of athletes do it. Um, why put yourself at jeopardy for an injury? That's, that's the big thing. Look, injuries are a big part of this game. Um, it's obviously going to affect the class. You know, uh, are our players going to stay another year? It, it affects the, obviously the draft class next year. Obviously, there's colleges and, and college football is going to lose billions of dollars. So it's just, I mean, boy, 2020 is going to be a year that we're never going to forget. And it's going to be for all the wrong reasons. Exactly. Exactly. I mean. Look, if you guys think that we're, you know, we're blowing this out of proportion, think about this. Without the push that LSU had to the championship, Joe Burrow would have never gotten the deal he got. He would have never been drafted number one overall by Cincinnati. They would have still been looking for their quarterback of the future. And guys like Clyde edwards Hilaire might not have been able to be jumped up in the first round by KC, even though Pat Mahomes was beating the drum to get him there. Guys like Justin Jefferson might not have been taken by Minnesota. Some of these linemen that are coming out, offense and defensive side of the ball, these guys wouldn't have been as highly drafted as they were without that push by LSU, without all that national exposure and clamoring for them on, the, on whoever's team that they ended up on. So this is going to wreak havoc, not just for this year or this coming draft in 2021, but for 2022 – underclassmen who would have just jumped out in their senior jumped out of their senior year right into the NFL they are probably going to be have to stay behind to finish out their senior year because they don't have enough tape behind them to warrant an NFL team drafting them high and guys that affects their money and uh, I'm, I don't know about you but don't play with my money exactly yeah don't play with my money money's exactly. a big thing so exactly now one guy who's uh one guy who was uh, feeling like his team was, was playing with his money and he talked his way out of town was Jamal Adams. And I saw a headline where Jamal, the Jamal Adams trade could be the second coming of the Legion of Boom in Seattle. Now, you're the NFC West guy. Is the talent there for the Legion of Boom? Is Jamal Adams the guy that you know, it can be that cornerstone piece for that defense? Well, Seattle feels like they have the pieces better than they had really the last couple of years, and that's kind of scary. They feel like they have that solidified run game. They got enough targets there. The offensive line still a little sketchy. They don't know if it's there yet, but the defense is mostly intact. They got the right coach. The quarterback is relatively still youngish. You know, obviously early 30s for for Russell Wilson continues to put big continues to put up big numbers. And him and Jamal Adams have created quite the uh, friendship, you know, over social media. And you, you can see that kind of in the media spectacle. So I, I think Seattle's going to be tough. It's just uh, they gave up two first rounders to get them. So is yeah. they're, they're going for the Super Bowl this year. That's, that's yeah. what would lead me to believe. Yeah, he, be, he better be worth it for, for what they paid for him. Now, a guy who I guess a lot of fantasy players out there are, based on his ADP, feels like, 
he's he's the guy and he's worth it is Deshaun Jackson. And my question here is, do they have the weapons that justify you his mean Deshaun eight, Watson? I mean, I'm sorry, Deshaun Watson. Just sorry. Yeah, Deshaun's. Uh, well, anyway, let's not get the Djax. You know, we're not getting the Djax because you know he had that stint with the with the skins that. Uh, uh, talk about that. So, but uh, yeah, Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson's a guy that. You know, fantasy players are drafting, you know, early. Uh, he's – I've seen him go as early as third, right after Mahomes and Jackson. I've seen him go as late as, you know, maybe number seven or eight. So, I mean, is he worth that high of a pick? And does he have the weapons that justify? I know he's got – they brought in Brandon Cooks, and I know you're high on Cooks. But, I mean, he's one hit away from a concussion of being out of the NFL entirely. Will Fuller just can't seem to stay healthy, you know. So I mean, who else is out there? I mean, they, they really don't have. And they brought in Randall Cobb, but wait, this is a Randall Cobb years removed from the Packers and the phenomenal season that he put up, you know, there in Green Bay. So I mean, who is he leaning on to get this much love? I wouldn't draft Deshaun Watson in my draft. I like Brandon Cooks to have a pretty good bounce back. I think he needs to figure out that this is the stop where he needs to make something happen because he's been shipped around quite a bit. Um, I mean, it wasn't that long ago he was putting up pretty good numbers in New Orleans, and now he needs to kind of do that again. And I think he can, but Deshaun Watson, I, I think this could be kind of a regression, regressing year for him because, I mean, you, you lose what, D-Hop? It just seems like you know. It just seems like Houston's trying to kind of patch it together with Randall Cobb, who's, I mean, what? How old is he? I mean, he looks like he's slowing down every time you yeah, see him. Feels like he's been in the in the league for like fifty years and forever. I mean, he was, he was yeah. in that Packer jersey for a while. Yeah, he was in the Packer uh, jersey for a while. He was he did a short stint with Dallas. Dallas, and, yeah. And now he's just moved down the state to Houston. So I mean. I don't know what his next stop is unless it's, uh, you know, east to New Orleans. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what he's happens. Not, he's not – He's not. Deshaun Watson is not a fantasy guy for me. I don't – I would not reach. I would not reach for him. I maybe, maybe a bench guy, but I don't think he's going to slip that far down. So No, he's not going to slip that far down. And somebody, for whatever reason, is believing that this is the Deshaun Watson that made Deshaun Watson Deshaun Watson. This is the guy a couple of years ago – who was basically what we see Lamar Jackson doing now on a whole new level is what Deshaun Watson was doing a few few years ago with the rushing and the bowling people over and the pa- I mean he's I will, passing but I will say Deshaun Watson is a lot better than I think a lot of people expected him to be when he came out of Clemson. I, yeah. I think people didn't know how he was going to work in the NFL and I think that he exceeded those goals. So that's good for him there. All right, now, guys, you know what today is. You know it's Mock Draft Monday. And here we have a very special Mock Draft Monday for you. We've got Mock Draft Monday with head-to-head. Let me pull up the right screen here. Head-to-head with the dean and the professor – as soon as I find the right screen that we're on, there we go. You got like a hundred icons. Also. I know I've got a I got a bunch of them up. So. <laughs> but uh, but guys, we're going head to head today. This is not a he's going to pick one and then I'm going to tell him why he's wrong or I'm going to do one and he's going to tell me why I'm wrong. This is no a head to head. We're both going to tell each other why we're wrong. But uh, we do have a clock on this. There is a minute and a half to make your Ooh. pick. Okay. So make the pick and we're gonna we're gonna see what we get into. Neither one of us knows what we're getting here right now as far as draft position, and this is the way we both like it. However, uh now this is a standard scoring league. This is a quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, tight end, uh running back, wide receiver flex. Uh we have a oh, sorry. Uh, kicker, six bench spots, and a defense. Now, let me see if I can edit this. 
No, I can't. I was going to try to go PPR. Oh, here we go. Let's see. Can we add it? Yes. Okay, so we're going to edit this down to a PPR now. So we know you guys out there that a lot of these formats are now PPR formats because a lot of times the uh, the draft format that you're going to be on is one that is already preset. It's predetermined. There's a PPR setting in there. Unless you go in and customize it, it's going to have that PPR setting. So it's points per reception. Uh, Chet, we haven't done one like this before. No. So you ready for some PPR action? I'm excited. I haven't done a PPR in God knows how long. Now, guys, remember, PPR, you're going to have those high-volume wide receivers are going to be more valuable. Those pass-catching running backs are going to be more valuable. And right before I hit start, let's start with thanking our sponsor of the day, Keller's Bakery of Youngsville. You can find them at 627 Lafayette Street, located on the Youngsville Highway in, La in uh, Louisiana. Guys, go out. Grab one of their meringue pies. They've got chocolate. They've got coconut. they got lemon. And they are phenomenal, guys. Trust me, I've had these. Their donuts are spectacular. If you are, if you got that sweet tooth, go down there, grab a donut from Keller's Bakery. You will not be sorry. You can find them on Facebook, Keller's Bakery of Youngsville. If you want to place an order through uh, instant messaging, or you can call 337-856-4449 and talk to them. And guys, I'm working on some sweet deals for my listeners. So stay tuned, and if you tell them that the Dean sent you, we're going to have something sweet for you, but wait for that announcement, and we'll, we'll let you know when that comes. So here we go. We're getting started with our draft. Let's get this rolling. And as we're loading we up, going? Guys, remember my uh, my my longtime sponsor as well, Zia of Lafayette, on Duce Road here in Lafayette, Louisiana. Did I get the number one pick? You get the number one pick. <laughs> now, guys, this is the second time that we're running through this, so there might be a little technical difficulty. So if there is, you're going to see down there that there's a Skins fan. That is our secondary team. So. Professor Chet is on the clock with the number one pick. Let's see if we got the technical issue worked out. If not, we got a backup plan. Yeah, I can't click anything. Okay, so we're going to the backup plan with that. Uh, we're going to go down, and it looks like Professor Chet is going to get the sixth overall pick, and I'm looking at the fourth. That's fine. fine. I like six, to be honest. And we just got to wait for the clock to run out. Now, Chet, sitting at the number one spot, if you're sitting there, who are yeah. you taking? Oh, without a doubt, I'm taking Michael Thomas. So you're taking Michael Thomas with the number one overall pick in PPR over CMC? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm reaching. Well, it's a little shocker, you know. I'm shocked because I thought, it, guys, honestly, look, we don't rehearse this if you can't tell. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I said Michael Thomas because I felt him, but you know, you never know. Like I'm not, you know. <laughs> Look, I will remind him of that because we do have a one point the, the PPR draft in our league of record, and if Chet winds up in that and he gets the number one pick, I will automatically just put Michael Thomas on the board. <laughs> no, hey, no, no. you already made your pick. We already <laughs> talked about this. I got video proof. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so speaking of the aforementioned Michael Thomas, okay, now here's here's my thing with, with Michael Thomas is I see a fall off coming. I see the addition of Emmanuel Sanders. I see a looking for them to bring back Alvin Kamara a little bit. So there's a little caution there. Here's the only reason why I'm taking Michael Thomas. And – it's very, simply, it's very simply Jameis Winston because even if Drew Brees goes down, I'm telling you right now, I got no problem with Winston chucking him the ball. 
All right, I'm on the clock now. Okay, so we got you. Now, can I draft somebody? Now, let's see if. So who are, you, who are you looking at to draft there, Chet? Uh, just give me Devontae. So we're taking Devontae Adams? Yeah. All right. Okay, so we get, let's see, check out our draft board here. Okay, so Chet is Skins fan 74. For those of you who are wondering, this was our backup plan since uh, we had some <laughs> technical difficulties with his uh, original team. So back on the clock, who are we looking at there, Chet? Uh, Julio. All right, so we're going Julio. So we're going wide receiver, wide receiver. And, guys, you're going to see this play a lot in PPR leagues where if you don't get CMC, if you don't get guys who – like Alvin Kamara. You see Alvin Kamara come off third right there. That's yeah. because we're in a PPR, okay? Yeah. If you're not in a PPR, you're in a standard scoring. I'm telling you right now, Alvin Kamara is going to drop. And he's gonna he's gonna drop down probably seven eight because you're gonna see Zeke fall into the third spot, followed by probably Michael Thomas, and then normally it's gonna be Derrick Henry in that spot. So we got Julio there. I'm up next. Let's bring up our cheat sheets and hide our drafted player so we see who's there. Okay, so we see Devontae Adams already off the board. I need a running back. Guys. You love AJ. Yes, the, yes, the regression is coming, but let's face it. This is the number two wide receiver on the Packers, and he just so happens to be a running back as well. So when you can get guys like this in a PPR league, that's the kind of play that you're looking for, okay? So we see – let's see who goes off the board here. We see Travis Kelsey off the board. And we're going to have to wait a second for the, uh, the auto pick to kick in here. But we see Kelsey off the board. We see uh, Godwin off the board. And, look, Godwin, the only reason that he's up there in in the second round is purely the Brady hype train. We all know the Brady hype okay. train. Which you love, train. don't you, David? Look, I'm telling you right now, guys, look, in a PPR, I, don't, I can't blame you for going after Chris Godwin in the first round. In the standard scoring league, there's no way I'm doing having anything to do with him. And the only reason I would touch him in a PPR is for the sheer volume because he is going to have to be the guy to take the pressure off of Brady because he's not as young as he used to be. We all know this. He's never been a fleet-footed quarterback. So he, that's why he loves his slot receiver, and that's all Chris Godwin is. He's not going to play on the outside. That's Mike Evans' territory. So that's all he's going to be. we got the countdown here. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And let's see who the computer picks here. We got Allen Robinson and then George Kittle goes off. Now, I love the Allen Robinson pick right there, just for the simple fact that 
who else is there in Chicago? I mean, you've got Miller, but do you really trust him to do anything with Trubisky? I mean, Robinson is basically quarterback proof as far as I'm concerned. So we see the big the big names go off the board and I'm looking here. PPR. I'm gonna go Juju because that is Big Ben's guy. Big Ben's back, he's healthy. I believe that he can stand up to the pressure, that he will have that bounce back here. So I got no problem going with. Juju right there. So who are we looking at, give Professor? Me Chris, give me Chris Carson. I like Carson. So we're liking some Chris Carson this year. Yeah. All right. I think you have to pick yeah. it for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm picking. I'm picking for him, guys. So we're we're having a second. Well, we have to wait till the clock too. Okay. No. My uh. My draft keeps refreshing, so. Yeah. And don't worry, guys. As we go go farther and farther in the uh, in the year, we're gonna have all the kinks worked out. That's what preseason is for. That's why we do mock drafts. Let's see. Who did we? Were you able to get him? Uh, nope. No, the game Mike Evans. So well, Mike Evans. No biggie. I shall live. <laughs> Oh, game Melvin Corbin. Okay. <laughs> I actually like my team. Actually, <laughs> I don't mind it. I, I I'm not saying I'm not in love with the Mike Evans pick, but I like Melvin Gordon enough because I think he's going to get a lot of touches. So, sign me up. I'll do it. I'll work with it. So let's check out the cheat sheets here. And I tell you what, guys, just for this, just for the simple sake of our uh, our technical difficulties here, let's burn through the rest of the draft. As we'll, we'll comment on, I'll make some picks, and Chet will co be commenting on the uh, the other picks. Let's see, I'm turning off my. It's got my my auto pick turned on. I'm gonna turn that off now. Let's see what we can do for that. So. You guys know I love DJ. Let's go out and we'll get DJ because we know that he has been involved in the passing game before. And we talked at the top of the show about Deshaun Watson and what it's going to mean for him to have the kind of year that he's being expected to have, okay? Because he's going to have to find those targets from D Hop, got to go somewhere. And if his wide receiving core starts going down, which we think it probably will, those those that volume's got to go someplace, and there's no other place for it to go but to DJ. Are you back on the clock? No, so I'm back on the clock, and you see Robert Woods, Keenan Allen, DJ Shark, and Cortland Sutton off the board as the wide receivers, and one running back in James Conner. And guys. This is what we're talking about. You see the plethora of wide receivers flying off the boards because this is a PPR. This is where your depth in wide receivers come into play, and it basically promotes guys who you wouldn't normally take until the sixth, seventh, eighth round up to five, four, five, sixth round, okay? I like the Keenan Allen pick because I think it's going to be – I think it's – I think Jared Goff's got a huge chip on his shoulder. So, I think that might be a big pick oh, where he'll with, get a lot of touches. With Keenan Allen? Yeah. With the Chargers? 
Yeah. Oh, oh, uh, freaking me. That's okay. <laughs> Guys, look, totally lost here. But he had a lot of uh, – Nick's my quarterbacks up there. Yeah, he had a lot of uh, meetings today. So, uh, Professor Chet is kind of uh, – I am proud. Back there, so – all right. You see Terry, uh, you know, my boy Terry McLaurin off the board here. Look, guys, we talk about number one receivers. If you look look at the squad that the Dean has, Michael Thomas, Juju, and Terry McLaurin, all of these guys are the number one receivers on their team. And we're talking high volume here, okay? If anybody – we heard uh, – oh, it looks like we got technical difficulty worked out for uh, for Chet here. So, uh, who's your oh. six-round pick there, Professor? Can I go to the, can I go to the cheat sheet? Let yep. see what I got. Let's see. Oof. I'm going to reach here. Give me Cam Akers. If you can, I, I can't do I it. Can. Let's see. So now tell uh, now we know in my bold predictions. I'm projecting Cam Akers to be winning Offensive Rookie of the Year, and it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get him for you. Oh, uh, okay. Well, whoever it takes, let's see who gets. It. So let's see. Uh, let's see who who we get taken here. Dak Prescott. Okay, that would not have been my pick. No. That I don't need a quarterback. I always feel like quarterbacks, Dean, and I don't know how you do this, but I can always get the quarterback I want in the seventh, eighth round. I can get him later in the draft. I, really yeah, can. Exactly. I, I don't value my quarterbacks just as much, I think, as fantasy owners used to, like guys with like Aaron Rodgers back in their prime, Peyton Manning. Those guys used to go, you know, first overall, first round, but – I don't need to do that anymore. I don't. It's Thanks. not part of my recipe of winning. Now, guys, uh, while we're working through the technical difficulties on this episode here, of Fantasy Football Academy 2020, Chad wanted to go ahead and take Cam Akers, and he said he was reaching. So look back at this. David Montgomery is the only running back off the board here. And this is one of the things about uh, – running backs in a PPR format, guys who aren't either elite or, you know, top two tier running backs, these guys are going to fall in PPR because you see all of the yellow through all this draft board. These are all wide receivers that are going. These are guys who are going to get you more value than a running back who's not involved in the passing game. And we don't know what Cam Akers is going to be. So, that's probably one of the reasons why Cam is still on the board, okay? And we see Mark Ingram and – I don't mind Ingram. Hollywood Brown off the board as well. And, guys, Hollywood Brown here, I like it just for the simple fact that aside from Mark Andrews, who else is catching the ball in Baltimore? Well, I think Ingram's going to have some touches, maybe, but I'm hoping that now because he's on my team. <laughs> and guys, remember, this is why we do mock drafts. Right here is why we do them. Okay, we do the mock drafts. We make we make the crazy selections that we normally wouldn't make just to see what works out and what shakes out where. Okay, so we see that my team right here. And let's go look at – and this guy right here, look. In a PPR format, I am shocked that Kareem Hunt is still around. Just for the simple fact that if there's anybody as a running back that's going to be used as a wide receiver, it's going to be Kareem Hunt. To get him in the sixth round in a PPR format is a blessing in disguise. I mean – He's he should be going fourth round. I see Debo Samuel picked, and that's just a pick. You got yeah, that's just a computer pick. That's going. something that you know. Yeah, this is not see. the year for him. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Don't do it. 
Uh, and we see Josh Allen and Matt Ryan. So, and we see Michael Gallup, Will Fuller off the board, Tyler Boyd off the board. This is where you start getting into some of your questionable wide receivers because Will Fuller is in injury prone. Tyler Boyd, he's behind A.J. Green. You got John Ross in the mix. You got Joe Mixon in the mix in the passing game. We don't know what they're going to try to do with, uh, with Joe Burrow. I mean, are they going to try to – incorporate the running back into the passing game as well we don't know just to try to I don't, get some of the heat off of him i don't mind matt ryan in the seventh round um he's a guy obviously who's going to air it out he's going to give you your numbers he is a good fantasy quarterback so i think you realize that he We're is gonna, playing to that fantasy role in atlanta yeah i'm going to take a page out of chet's book here because everybody knows i'm loving me some cam this year, so I'll go ahead and take Cam. I got Marvin Jones. I'm really not liking my team. <laughs> and Sterling Shepard. Okay. All right. Boy, we are loaded up on wide receivers, though. Now, look, guys, I'm not going to lie. Look, if you do the, the breakdown, like, let's just look at Marvin Jones real quick. I mean, last year this guy had 62 receptions, 779 yards, nine touchdowns. Okay, so the guy is scoring. So he only had 13 games. If you carry that out, this guy has the potential to be a 1,000-yard receiver, especially with Matt Stafford thrown to him. Now, Matt Stafford missed half of the year last year, and I'm going to make this next pick real quick. Let's go down here and see who we have left at wide receiver. I thought Matt Stafford wasn't playing this year. No, he's still playing this year. Yeah, I don't know. He, yeah, he was not on the opt-out list. That's what it was. He was threatening to. That's what. Yeah. So, he's on the COVID exempt. He might – well, no, uh, Galladay is on the COVID exempt list, but he'll soon be off. Are you, now, Are you reaching me? I'm reaching. Woo. I'm reaching. I like Jalen Rager simply yeah. because there is so – much injury on Philly, okay? This is, like, not even funny how much injury there is on this. But here's a couple of stats that I want to throw out at you real quick. Last year, in eight games, Matt Stafford had 291 attempts. If you follow that pace out, that's 582 attempts, okay? His pace – was better than anyone else except Winston, Golf, Ryan, Brady, and Carson Wentz. So he only got beat by five other quarterbacks in the entire league, if you bring this out. He scored 19 touchdowns. You put that out in the, the span of the season on the pace that he stays at, he's leading the league in touchdowns with 38, two more than Lamar Jackson. He's throwing... 2,499 yards in eight games. Follow that out. It's 4,998 yards, only, num only finishing below Jameis Winston. So this guy should be going as probably the number three quarterback off the board, and there's some drafts that I've seen where he isn't even drafted. So missing that half of the year and having those injuries – Unless you believe in Matt Stafford, like I do, you're not taking him. But I believe it's a mistake. Now, let's go up here and reach for an insurance policy. Alexander Madison, you know me. I love me some Alex. No. And in the ninth round. We just get in. Let's see who we got here. Miller, okay. Philip oh, Lindsay, Lindsay, Anthony Miller. So while I look at the at the cheat sheet, Chet, give us a little breakdown on uh, on the pick right there, Anthony Miller and Philip Lindsay. You love it, you hate it, you can do it without it. What are you thinking? Oh boy, Philip Lindsay, sure. I, I yes, he's going to get his touches. And you look at the Denver situation, I'm sure – I mean, that's an offense that's really not going to go far. 
So he could be the guy. They really like him in Denver. Anthony Miller in Chicago. Oh, boy. Can Mitch Trubisky throw the ball anymore, Dean? I mean, he was absolute garbage last year. Yeah. If he can get the ball to him, I mean, he can give me some decent numbers, I guess. Yeah, the only thing the only thing that, like I said, with, with the Allen Robinson pick back in, I think it was like the third round, the only guy on the Bears who is quarterback proof, wide receiver-wise, is Allen Robinson. Okay? Right. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to take Curtis Samuel. There has been a lot of chatter coming out of Carolina about how involved Curtis Samuel is going to be with Teddy Bridgewater and huge upgrade in quarterback from Kyle Allen last year to Teddy B this year. And he's already – yeah, he – there's – both of them are learning a new system now. You've got Coach coming in saying that Curtis Samuel is going to be a focal point, that is going to – the passing game is running through Curtis Samuel. So, you know, do you want to believe the coach speak? If you do, and we've got to watch these camps. Guys, if you're not – plugged in to the training camps get plugged in however you've got to ESPN NFL whether you go to the specific Twitter feed which you can find us on Twitter as well at fantasy Dean 20 and follow us there get plugged in to the camps because that's the only way without a preseason that's going to find out where these coaches are leaning so let's check out the draft board real quick. And let's go ahead. Take, I'm a believer. Wow. Let's wow. go ahead and Matt Stafford. Because look, right there, he would have been gone because Daniel Jones left. Let's look at this. Daniel Jones left, and you guys know I was big on, on DJ on the Daniel Jones, the DJ from uh, New York. Oh, I got a headache now. Tannehill <laughs> and Brady. Oh, I got a headache. Hunter Henry and Adrian Peterson. Oh, <laughs> goodness gracious. Now, look, if you look down at, at Chet's original team, <laughs> at Tariq Cohen, Emmanuel Sanders, Duke Johnson, and Preston Williams – from Miami. How, now, how do you feel about Preston Williams? Because I've seen a, some shows that are giving him a lot of love over Devontae Parker. Right. They they like him in Miami. And, I mean, obviously they're in love with Tua. It, look, I hope he wins a certain gig. Uh, I think he can give you enough fantasy points to be reliable at that round, though, Dean. Look at where he was picked. I mean, it's – it's kind of one of those you know, 10th, 11th, 12th rounder kind of guys. But I think he's fine, though, uh, in that Miami system. Right. All right, so. Uh-oh, yeah. who's on the board? You, Gronkowski. Yeah, yeah, you know guys know there's no way I'm taking Gronkowski. I'm jumping up here. I'm snagging if I can before this time runs out. <laughs> A.J. Dillon, if I can. Can I grab him in time? You believe I did. Nope. Did nope. They gave me ben, Big Ben as my back. Oh, <laughs> I did get it. Get it though. Never, ever in a million years would you draft two straight quarterbacks. I, I did get A.J. Dillon. And let's see. Are we going? Orleans Saints defense? Okay. Yeah. Ooh, Darrington Evans. Okay. Yeah, you guys, there's, trust me, there's no way I'm going back-to-back -back quarterbacks. That's never happening. Never. No. No. The so, only uh, time that could happen is if you see someone that's going to slip all the way down and then you need a bench guy. I mean, it's rare. It's rare. I, I would, no, I'm going to tell you right now, if I were, and I'm not big on drafting a backup quarterback to start with, uh, right. I'd rather take a shot on someone else down the road. Uh oh. But if I'm going to draft a backup quarterback, I will tell you right now that it will probably more than likely be Cam Newton. Yeah. And that's the thing, though, Dean, is these quarterbacks that you want to pick up, 
are usually available. Yeah. All right, guys. So, like, you know, they're, since, they're not, you don't need to jump in. Since I've got Big Ben, let's go ahead and round it out and double up with Eric Ebron. And, guys, this is a strategy that I like to follow. I followed it almost every single year I've played where I double up with either a wide receiver and a quarterback or my tight end and a quarterback, okay, because I want that those double points coming off of the touchdowns and the yardage. So we see here, got, got the tight end. Now, here's a position, kicker and defense, that you can really stream. However, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to decide I want to stream a kicker. So I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to draft a defense with my last pick. Okay. And of course, guys, hey. I've talked them up. I believe they actually activated your former boy, Ruben Foster, off of the pup. Oh. He's back. Guys. What a reach. Front seven. The front seven has oh. five number one draft picks on it. What a homer reach there. Okay. I'm guys, I'm telling you, believe in Washington's D especially in that division. Especially, I say your bench is pretty good. Especially with Ron, with Ron Rivera there, okay? So, let's break it down real quick, guys. Let's look at the draft board. We scroll up. Oh, man. I really don't like any of my teams. <laughs> it's funny, though. Now, look, in our previous episode or our previous run at this, George Kittle was Chet's second round pick. That's right. In a PPR. So I for him to take Robinson and then Kittle in the third is not far off. Yeah. Okay. That's true. So now, you, they gave you Robinson here in the second. Judging by who went after him, who would you have picked up? Ooh, here we go. Who would you had have picked up if you had been able to? The Skins fan or Chet's? Chet. Oh, and with the with the second or third pick? With the with second. The, with the second. I don't know if I would have gone Alvin Alan Robinson. I probably would have gone. Uh, well, I probably would have gone Julio, but Julio went with the skin, so. Yeah, so we're talking the third round, third and fourth round, let's say. Third, if, I would have gone Kittle. No, 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 I'm saying for the Allen, place of the Allen Robinson pick. I probably would have gone Julio. Does that make sense? Well, no, because Julio was already gone. This oh, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Kittle. saying the um, so oh, the available would have been Juju Evans. Yeah, I like the Allen Robinson pick actually. I really do. I would have left it. Lynn Cooper. Because Allen Robinson is the number one guy. Yeah. So I just hope Mitch T can get him the ball. <laughs> now, what do you think about the James Conner in the fourth? Because here's the thing: is that his ceiling? Where, where are we looking at? Oh, James Conner. Um, Connor, his ceiling. Yeah. I mean, he could be the the third best running back in in fantasy right now because he has the that pressure of being a good running back in Pittsburgh. I mean, oh, they've had so many good. They've had only a few like great ones. Yeah. I just, I just don't, I just don't see him as as being that unbelievable guy that I would reach that far. My only concern with that pick, and we're going to get out of this real quick. Um, my only concern with the James Robinson is the, is the injury issue. And we've had not only the head coach, Mike Tomlin, but also the GM of the Steelers come out and, and basically be openly frustrated with the amount of injuries that James Conner has come out with. So, I mean, that's not what they want to do. And if the first injury that he gets, it's early in the year. 
whoever that backup is in Pittsburgh better be ready for a workload. So, but look, guys, we appreciate y'all bearing with us through this uh, technically challenged mock draft Monday here on Fantasy Football Academy 2020. As always, we try to do better the next time. So, Professor Chet, I appreciate you hanging in there with us and, uh, and going through this. Tomorrow, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to break down the NFC North. We're talking Packers. Bikes, uh, bears, and lions. Okay. Did you mention the Vikings? Oh, the Vikes. Yeah, and the Vikes. Okay. Your wife's division. Yes, my wife's division and my former guy, Captain Kirk, up there in the. Love that. Love Captain Kirk. Okay. How you like that? You like that? Yeah. I love saying it. I love it. I love it. So, guys, look. As always, I've been the Dean. We appreciate Professor Chet stopping by and hanging out with us. This has been Fantasy Football Academy 2020. Although it has been technically challenged, we appreciate you guys. Go down and show us some love. And as always, take care of each other. Draft strong. Trust your gut. And if you're going out, mask up, guys. Y'all take care. We'll see you next time on Fantasy Football Academy 2020.